Hello, I'd like to talk to you about the portfolio fever chart of critical chain project management. It's the concatenation of the individual fever chart. So let me just remind you what a fever chart is in critical chain, right? You have uh, on a chart two axes. The horizontal axis is, in fact, the, the, the project from the beginning to the end, right? I start here, I finish there. It's measured on the critical chain, which is the close cousin to uh, the critical path, right? And uh, then we have on the vertical axis uh, the buffer, the buffer consumption from 0% to 100%, okay? And when you are executing a project, obviously you start down here at the origin, right, at 0%. And as you uh, do the work and progress and consume some of the buffer, uh, you end up uh, crossing this, this graph. And if all goes well, you'll probably finish around here. Uh, that's to say not quite up in the top right hand corner because in fact the top right hand corner is the date you will promise your client or your management right that's to say you expect to have finished the project of course and to have consumed all of the buffer um, so what you try and do is aim to finish a little bit before then right to finish a tiny bit early uh, just like when you take an airplane and you wait a few minutes at the boarding gate so you don't miss the airplane same logic okay so you have these fever charts uh, and if you have the fever chart of a project that's halfway done, right, the, uh, the, the, the execution will, will stop somewhere up here in the middle, okay, and you have all these different fever charts, individual ones of healthy projects with a good probability of each of them going fast and finishing on time or early, okay. Now, the, the portfolio fever chart is just the concatenation of each of those on one page, right. So we have here this example with a number of different uh, projects that are on the same portfolio fever chart, right? And you can do that very easily because, as I said, it's expressed in percentages, right? From 0% to 100%. So whether it's a big two-year project or a shorter six-month project, it's in percentages. So the, the point is going to go across the uh, graph a lot faster. Uh, but you can put both of them on that graph, right? And a project which has a lot of buffer because a lot of un uncertainty or not much, this, it doesn't really doesn't matter at all since, again, it's measured in percentage, right? So you can put all of your portfolio on the same chart because everything's measured in percentage, right? So here we have it. We have the beginning of our, our uh, monthly uh, project uh, management meeting. Um, what do you think is the project that is in difficulty? Which is the priority in everything that we have here, right? Would you not agree that it's project one here? Because that project has not progressed very much, and yet it has consumed a lot of its buffer, right? Nearly 50% of the buffer. So if it carries on like that, it's just going to go up, 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 up like that, and it's going to finish very, very late, okay? Um, so it is the project which needs the most help, right? And in fact, the relative priorities of projects on a fever chart by defined by the slope right um, so number one here is the priority number two over there is the, is the next priority and so forth right and everything down here in the green uh, is okay right to put it another way if you're in the green you're in the noise you're in the expected uncertainty and variability okay and if you're in the red you're getting you have more uncertainty than you planned for and so that's where you have to have management attention to find solutions okay um, and the, the orange between the two is just to say, watch out, you're, you're going from the green into the red. So um, that's very interesting that you would have the, the, the meeting and say, what can we do with project one, right? Well, normally that meeting would have been prepared and people would have had a look at the uh, portfolio and they might have noticed that, for instance, uh, the people working on project 11 here were of the right capabilities and competencies to help uh, the project one Okay, and so they could be transferred from Project 11 to Project 1. We would double the resources for a month on Project 1, which would accelerate it, would go faster than was initially planned, and it would go back into the green, maybe, which is, which is great, right? We're working over here uh, before it becomes a big problem, and we still have a lot of time to find the right solution. It's excellent because often uh, it's because that there's a problem initially with the project because, I don't know, the specifications are more or less impossible or the proof of concept was... And uh, not very robust or whatever, and you still got time to find a solution, right? Whereas probably uh, in a lot of companies, in fact, you're just everybody screaming at each other up here. Projects are late, and you do, you're fighting between the most important project, which is very very late, 
and the project, the boss's project, which is just a little bit less late, and the, the whatever you know, you know the story, right? So that's that's it. You have this uh, portfolio fever chart, right? And the whole thing's the size of a postcard. You can put all of your portfolio on there, uh, whether you've got six, whether you've got twenty, whether you've got fifty uh, projects. It's the principle is the same, and you can do some exception reporting, right? You're just going to look at the stuff that needs help. You don't even have to discuss the projects in the green. Uh, during your review meetings because you know they're going to finish on time or early, right? That's the beauty of the critical chain project management. I hope that helped. Thank you very much.